my <laughs> body gets used to feeling calm and Come on, and uh, you know my nervous system doesn't get really activated as easily as it did before because um, that's ultimately what's happening when you're feeling stressed your nervous system gets to this like oh my god there's a threat or there's danger type mm-hmm. thing and now you start to physically feel mm-hmm. you know anxious or feel that heart beating or feel jittery and, and it's pretty much your body's telling you that something's going on right. and so now we have to calm our nervous system through different activities to let it know that everything's okay and the more that you give that nervous system comfort right mm-hmm. the more it's like okay i'm all right now there's not really a threat and now it takes uh, you build up that uh tolerance and, and so increase that th- uh, threshold so mm-hmm. yep and we're talking about COVID. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, we're back with another great episode of Speaking with Gravity. We're still in season nine, a great season so far. Uh, and we are welcoming you back. Glad that you decided to be with us again. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're right here with us. Uh, so, yeah, y'all y'all know us by now. I'm Joshua. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Tana Williams. And I'm Terrence Dawkins. And, well, we got a really interesting, I would say, topic today. But uh, so far, uh, sticking with tradition of, of this season, uh, Terrence has been leading us off uh, with some really interesting uh, want to knows uh, from you all, from the people. Uh, so let's let's hop into that, Terrence. If you, I think you got a good one today. People too. been talking. People been talking. People been talking. And I will add, if you have something that you would like to know, put it in the comments so we can address it. You That's know, it. We want to hear from all of you, but. Yeah. People have been talking. They want to know, can you get a dependable car <laughs> for $1,500? Ooh, I mm. wish. No, you don't think so? Huh? You don't think so? Man, uh, so I think it, it depends on, you know, I'm real contextual. It depends on what's dependable for you, mm-hmm. right? Um, if, if, you're going, if you're just going back and forth to work, and back and forth to work is like 5 to 10 miles, that might last you. So how long is it going to last you? Right. Now, if you like me and you up and down the road, up and down the highways and byways, um, you know, uh, I don't know if a $1,500 car would, mm-hmm. I don't know how much good it would do me. Now, there are some, like them 1998s, people still drive, 1998s, Toyotas and stuff like that, mm-hmm. people still driving them things around. Okay. Listen, but uh, but I, uh, I just don't know it. What do y'all think, though? What, what do you if, think? You at? What if I was to say you can get a dependable car for free? You have to expound on it. <laughs> you, do you believe? Well, first the question is, do you believe me? After I hear you expound on no, it, no, 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 they had this. Do you believe in him? I know. I feel like he's gonna say somebody can give you a car. Exactly. <laughs> it depends <laughs> on who you know. Yes. It so. depends on who you know. You can get because my first car uh, was a good car. My uncle gave it to me. And I, I didn't have to pay him anything, so that was my first car. These people ain't talking about that. I mean, they yeah, talking about but it. the question said, can you get a dependable car for fifteen hundred dollars? Right, you can actually get a dependable car for free. So technically, you can get a dependable car for fifteen hundred dollars, depending on who you know. Yeah, I'm cool. With it. I do believe you can get a um, dependable car for fifteen hundred dollars. There's a lot of factors <laughs> and work that has to go into that. Um, where are you going to find this car from? Mm-hmm. You know, who previously owned it and what kind of work they did on it to make it so dependable. Yep. Um, and why are they selling it for $1,500? So I think there are a lot of factors that go into it. Um, but if you're limited to $1,500, then you just have to find, do the work to find a dependable car. Mm-hmm. And I think Joshua, um, he made a valid point that what is dependable? Everybody has a different version of dependable. I would say, um, in my in my opinion, like a dependable car is able to... Get your needs done. So like you were saying, um, you know, get back and forth to work. Get your needs done. However, it may not take you everywhere you want to go. You may not be able to travel cross country in this car. The people told me what that the people you tell can you? <laughs> get a lemon that costs $20,000. Oh, the people are right. You can. So technically, so you, can, you can get a lemon for $1,500, but you also get a lemon for $20,000. Fact. So, I mean, mm. I think I think you can get a dependable car for fifteen hundred dollars, depending on who you know and the research you've done on it, who's had the car, mm-hmm. and all this stuff. So, there's a lot of factors, but I think you, the answer is 
Yes. From my personal perspective. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a, uh, just for my folks who out there looking for cars right now, and you want to avoid getting a lemon, there's a service called Lemon Squad. Have y'all heard of it? Mm-hmm. I There's a service called Lemon Squad. So if you're looking for a car, you find a car, right? Um, you call Lemon Squad, and they'll come out, and they'll assess the vehicle for you. I mean, of course, I guess you'll have to pay them. <laughs> but, uh, like, if you don't have a mechanic to come look at the car, Lemon Squad will send somebody out there. Oh, I didn't know I would keep that, that in mind. Yeah, so yeah, and that's all. So, so, so a little nugget for y'all. Lemon Squad dot com, maybe. I don't know some that. So, I, um, a dealer actually told me about it. He okay. was he was trying to sell me a car. He said, you you know. You can have Lemon Squad come out you you know, and look at it. So like, nah, I'm real. So I'm looking looking at a truck right now on a truck photo truck. But you know, I got a family, so I need a big back seat mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, it was four doors, but it, the back seat wasn't big enough okay. or whatever. That's understandable. So, but I am looking for a truck, and so I may be calling Lemon Squad because mm-hmm. I don't have a mechanic in, in Atlanta. Good. Yeah, but fifteen hundred is crazy. Maybe fifteen hundred a month. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I ain't big balling like that, dude. <laughs> I'm not trying to pay that myself, but well, I ain't big balling. But, you might, but, but that, that, trying to look for that truck, you gonna pay something? Like that. that truck gonna run. Boy, that gas in that truck gonna run. I hope not. Too bad, but but yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely. Uh, we we'll, we we'll, we'll appreciate that, Terrence. No problem. Uh, you yeah, know, I hope the people satisfied. I love talking to the people. Yeah, man, we, so, we 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 love our viewers. So, are you all willing to drive anything that is? Are you all willing to just drive anything? So, if you only have fifteen hundred dollars and you need transportation, are you willing to put your wants? What what color you want the car? What brand name you want the car? What type of gas this car takes? Whether the windows are tinted, are you are you willing to put your wants um, underneath and focus on your needs? For example, a dependable 1989 Nissan Sentra. If you only have $1,500, are you willing to drive that car? I'm, I'm take me, well, I go 85 or 26. <laughs> I'm, I'm tearing that highway up for that, for that Sentra. You ain't got to worry about that because the key word is dependable. dependable. I know it's going to get me where I need to go. I don't need to waste my money of $1,500 on a lemon. And then I go right down, I try to pull out my driveway, and then the engine fall out. Like, what am I going to do with that? $1,500 gone. Mm-hmm. But I don't care what it. I ain't gonna, I'll tell you what I'm about to say back. I do care what it look like, but I can over time make it to what I want it to be as long as it's dependable. If it so, lasts that long. Yeah, you're right. Come on, now. That's what I'm saying, man. Right? That 19, <laughs> that, that, she said, sister said 1989, okay? She said dependable. For how long? <laughs> she didn't say, but she said dependable. 1989, that's a long time. That thing got like a million miles on it, man. <laughs> my, my 15 probably got just as much. Cool. Yeah, me and that Malibu have been moving. Mm. Yeah. Well, should we get into the episode? Let's get into it. it. Okay, okay. So today's episode is about building your coping kit. Mm -hmm. Wow. Your coping kit. Your 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 you I think about it like so first of all, if you if you're building it, hopefully you build it before you need it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the key thing. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Hopefully you're building it before you need it in preparation for for the time to come. We never know what we're gonna come up against. So it, it's kind of like uh, in the Bible's uh, analogy about building a house that mm-hmm. have, with a strong foundation. foundation. Right, right. And if you if if you build it on a rock, I mm-hmm. think it is. I don't want to misquote it like that or mess it up. But one person built their house on a rock, strong foundation. The other person built their house on something else, and it got Sand. blown away. Yeah, yeah. Saying it, it get it got blown away. Right. So having some things in your kit. So that you prepare when those times come. Because trust me, they coming. Mm -hmm. They coming. Those mental health challenges, those things that could lead to mental health challenges, those things are coming. Um, You want to kick us off with that? Cutie of the hour. Let's go ahead and address the cutie of the hour. Um, This is just a fun fact that you're able to share with your loved ones or the people you know. And just create some conversation or discussion around it. So that today's cutie of the hour says, the best coping skills are ones that can be implemented regularly, periodically throughout the day or even the week. Although a week-long getaway sounds fun, there can be more benefit from a regular, frequent stress management activities. Oh, beautiful. Frequent. Re- regular, frequent stress management activities. yeah. What are some of those stress management activities. Mm. Mm. I mean, and that, of course, that's different for everybody. Like, I'll give an example. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, uh, which, I'm, of course, I always got to give a story. So, by, well, um, uh, about a couple of years ago, I was playing basketball, which was my regularly stress management activity. Okay. And 
boom, tore my Achilles playing basketball. Oh, no. Yeah, popped that How thing. long ago was that, bro? About two years ago. So, oh, okay. Popped so you were balling for that. Yeah, huh? you know, a little something. But um, had to have surgery mm-hmm. and uh, was out for a while. And, and during that time, it was, it was a lot uh, with the non weight bearing, with the knee scooter, with the physical therapy, the shower chair, trying to get mm. dressed with one leg. It was just mm. a lot mentally uh, to recover from that. Mm. And so it took that took away because now I ain't gonna lie I ain't played basketball since because I'm afraid right? I'll be honest with it mm-hmm. so it took away one of my regular stress uh, management activities mm-hmm. and so I'm still I'm in the process of trying to find new ones okay. and um, you know when I was recovering I couldn't go go out and do landscaping in the yard so that took away mm. another one I couldn't um, go play or do things with my niece and nephew like I want to. I take one another one. So I'm in the process of rebuilding my kit, right? Mm-hmm. And so what that looks like for me is going back to the base of what I enjoy doing. I like spending time with family. Me and my cousin are, are trying to pick up golf. Okay. I'm not Tiger Woods. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm, it's just something that we can do together, and it's a new skill that I'm trying to learn. Um, being Trying to get back out into the yard playing with my dogs it's just different things now to rebuild it because you can have a coping kit but then those coping skills can eventually stop working for you and now you got to develop another kit so what the look like for me golf I'm trying to learn golf mm-hmm. um family uh reading um planning like for the future which can cause anxiety for some people but for me it's it kind of motivates me mm. um, and spending time with niece and nephew. So those are some, for me, stress management activities that I've learned mm-hmm. to create after losing what I had before. Yeah, and I'm going to answer your question on what are some types of coping skills, but I want to address the importance of having a coping kit. Um, and it, to me, the importance of having a coping kit is like you were saying earlier, um, you want to already be prepared so that when these traumatic or extreme life obstacles come your way, you, you're already equipped with how you're going to handle the situation. Um, and so, for an example, you said golf may be, you know, you can go play golf and relieve some stress, relieve some worry, come back to your routine life and conduct business how it should be conducted without feeling this intense feelings of stress or worry. Um, you know, you can't determine left from right. Some examples of coping skills for me, I will use the example of traveling. However, that is a very expensive, um, you know, tech. That is a very expensive form of coping with stress that I experienced in life. And I know that I can't travel every day. Um, That is something I can't even do monthly because it's expensive. So a more practical um, coping skill that I use is journaling. And also I know a lot of my friends um, utilize coloring books. Um, Mm -hmm. They And another technique is yoga and relaxation techniques. I found that relaxation techniques such as breathing techniques is so effective because you can literally do it anywhere and at any Mm -hmm. time. Yeah, I, I do some of that sometimes. As far as the breathing techniques, you know, y'all gave some really good activities. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I do a whole lot. Um, I feel like I do have some skills, mm-hmm. some coping skills, but not so much coping activities. I mean, I do take a walk. That okay, that's an activity. That is great. I, I do take a walk um, sometimes, like when I'm feeling away, um, or when I'm feeling starting to feel overwhelmed. Let's get up. Let's do something different. Uh, even in the office, sometimes like I'm the person that's. I'm getting up. I'm walking mm-hmm. around. Y'all sit down as long as y'all want to. I got to. I got to move around a little bit. Um, but uh, more so with me, I think it, there are coping skills like um, gratitude. Right, thinking mm-hmm. about what I'm uh, really thankful for, even when I'm getting ready to. Uh, if I see myself getting ready to go down a negative path, and uh, you know, as far as thinking wise, um, whether it's, it could be pitying yourself or it could be. Um, you know, just thinking about what you don't have. Right. Then thinking about what do I have? What do I have going mm-hmm. for me, right? So gratitude is a coping skill that's really helpful for me. I don't, I don't know how much it would be for for others. I've heard others say that it has been, but I think I think you should try it definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I was telling someone about it the other day. They were just talking to me about um, uh, some of the things that they had going on, and we were able to kind of get on a better, get in a better mindset just from just from us talking about okay. What are you thankful for though about yourself? Right. You know, what do you have going for yourself? So I think gratitude is one. Um, giving myself grace and forgiving myself sometimes for like little mistakes and things like that. Forgiving myself for not 
I won't say forgiving myself for not being perfect, but allow just allowing myself grace for for not you know reaching perfection all the time mm-hmm. right uh, I'm blessed in if I put the effort in I'm blessed in where I end up at right and next time I can end up in an even better place right and I um, feel yeah. oh, I'm sorry to cut you off no you could go ahead and I feel like when you already have um, skills or activities in your coping kit then you can utilize them um, at your convenience yeah. and I say that because you know if you're dealing with stress and anxiety you access that coping kit um, and within that coping kit can even be some resources to talk to other people. Yeah. So within that coping kit, um, once you access it and utilize the skills or the activities in there, that can help reduce that stress and anxiety that you may be experiencing in that moment. All right. Another story. Mm-hmm. So this... Uh, one second, this, one second. For, for, for photographer, you got to make sure you get me and Hannah because we both got on. We both rocking the same colors today. You feel me? <laughs> so you they go ahead. I'm, I'm, but, but I'm sorry. I know he had stopped my story to try to get a photo. <laughs> no, I'm just But it's, it's all good, though. These yeah. are, these are. I just thought about that. I was like, I like Make sure pink. you get me. I, I was like, I like that pink. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for I'm my like, close-up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, can't believe you did that. I'll just play. But no, like this past week, I ain't going to lie, it was... Uh, pretty stressful mm-hmm. as far as not necessarily. Uh, but I mean, life's been stressful, but I was. This about to be very vulnerable with y'all. It's okay. Appreciate it. All right. So I was talking to this to to this, to this girl, right? Mm-hmm. And she wasn't really giving me much in return. You know, I was showing interest and stuff, but she was saying she was interested, but wasn't really showing it. And that ain't gonna lie, that kind of got me. Uh, at first, when we first started talking. Uh, communication was great. You know, I was felt at peace, but then the communication started to fall off, which started to create a lot of anxiety. Mm-hmm. So, uh, there's one particular day this week, I was feeling like a lot of anxiety, a lot of anxiety. So I said, you know what? When I get home today, uh, I'm gonna take some of my friends, see if they wanna uh, ride on motorcycles, because that's part of what I do. That's part of what's in my mm-hmm. coping kit. Nice. Uh, is ride my bike because when you riding a motorcycle. You have to focus on everything else but the problem. I got to focus on this car. I got to focus on this potential situation. I got to focus on what I'm doing on the bike. So my mind is directly focused on the present and not the past Mm -hmm. or the future. So that's why I like to ride my bike. So I'm feeling real stressed, overwhelmed. Went for riding my bike. Rode for a couple hours, came home. Felt like a totally different person. Mm -hmm. But why? Because the key thing about the coping um, skills or coping kit, you want to find things that can keep you in the present and right. not the future or the past. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about the future, those are things that's not has not happened yet, and that's going to affect how you feel now. If you think mm-hmm. about the past, as things you can't control, which now impacts the present. So, my bike helps me keep me present and, and grounded present. and grounded, and that's what a coping skill is supposed to do. And I'm glad you highlighted that because. Um, so many people can often um, have a misconception of, okay, am I coping or am I escaping? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it can be a fine line. And in order to manage your anxiety or stress in a healthy way, um, we're advocates for finding those coping skills compared to escaping. So you use your bike as, as an example. You know, you're still present in the moment. You're not taken away from reality to the point where once you come back, get off the bike, you, you still have to address the issue at hand. And I did. Yeah. So right. that's, that's the difference. And I don't mean to cut you off. You're fine. Mindset, different. With yeah. Mind. With a new mindset. Because mm-hmm. if I would have addressed it right before, right. like well, without riding my bike, it would it probably would have made a situation worse. Mm-hmm. But I was able to ride my bike, become focused in the present, right. calm down to the point where now I can go back and address it. Mm-hmm. And then I did not escape, escape. it. That's so important. So, yes. And so um, I remember, yeah, like, yeah. we mentioned coloring books earlier and um, a lot of my friends do utilize coloring books but that is something that came from children you know Mm -hmm. we saw children utilizing coloring books and um, you know just in their own zone during that time and not even thinking about what's going on around them that can happen um, for adults too if we're focused on something that eases our anxiety or eases our stress um, in the moment we we're able to come back to life and process things in a more clear mentality I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I love that. I love what both of y'all brought up. And then, you know, you brought up something, uh, Terrence, um, that made me think about, I, I think it's not just, 
because we were thinking about the best coping skills being ones that can be implemented regularly. I think I would take it a step further. The best coping skills are ones that should be implemented as life practices. Mm-hmm. So if I'm thinking about, and you kind of alluded to it too, Hannah. If I'm thinking about, um, what, what was one that I was talking about earlier? Um, like walk, what that you do? You said walking. Walking. Uh, walking, things like that. Um, I don't have to just do that when a challenge comes up. No, right. right. I don't right. have to just do that. It's. It, I'm already, it's already a part of my, uh, it's already a part of me. I'm making mm-hmm. it more a part of me. So it's like I'm practicing and um, I'm building up. I'm building up that momentum. So when that challenge does come, mm-hmm. I got something in my in, in my uh, I got something ready for it. I'm I'm so important that you highlighted practicing those coping skills and not just utilizing them in the um, sudden moment when you need them because <laughs> um, I feel like when we practice those coping skills, for example. Um, this this person I know, they had like a 30-day challenge and a part of their 30-day challenge, they had to go for a 10-minute walk outside every day. And this was in February. So I'm like, you know, I can't join this challenge because I don't <laughs> want to go outside walking in the wintertime. But he was expressing to me how peaceful um, he was during mm-hmm. that walk and how he was just able to like be present in the moments and appreciate life and become grounded in that moment. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once the walk was over, he had more of a clear mentality and able to make more rational decisions simply because he had practiced taking a walk daily. Um, And and that's something, that's, that's a skill or a coping mechanism that I want to implement into my life, you know, taking more walks in nature. And the more you implement the coping skills before there's a problem, the longer it will take for there to be a problem. Mm. Meaning my body gets used to feeling calm and, and uh, you know, my nervous system doesn't get really activated as easily as it did before because um, that's ultimately what's happening when you're feeling stressed. Your nervous system gets to this, like, oh, my God, there's a threat or there's danger type mm-hmm. thing. And now you start to physically feel, mm. you know, anxious or feel that heart beating or feel jittery and, and it's pretty much your body's telling you that something's going on right. and so now we have to calm our nervous system through different activities to let it know that everything's okay and the more that you give that nervous system comfort right mm-hmm. the more it's like okay i'm all right now there's not really a threat and now it takes uh, you build up that uh tolerance and, and so increase that th- uh, threshold so mm-hmm. yep and we're talking about coping skills and coping activities um, I think another couple of skills would be uh, having affirmations, positive affirmations. Oh yeah, that is that important. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah um, that even, is important. I think I think Kirvin had mentioned. Um, I was talking to him. I think he mentioned um, someone who, uh, forgive me, Kirvin, but someone who had like a bag of coping mechanisms. Mm-hmm. Having like, I mean, believe it or not, I have in my phone. I have some affirmations, mm-hmm. right? Um, but having something like that to go to. Uh, for a lot of people spiritually, it can be the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. Um, having scriptures to go to. For me, is that, you know, going to the Word. Um, but you can definitely have uh, things when you think about them and, and you go back and you look at them and they can really save you from, from really stressing out about a situation. Right. You know, um, so those affirmations are really important too, I think. And I also want to acknowledge that, you know, it's common to experience stress and worry, but if you have been diagnosed with anxiety, stress and worry can be a daily issue um, that you have have to overcome on a daily, and it can be a uh, it can be a challenge. So I just want to highlight some types of anxiety. Yeah. Let's see. So there is generalized anxiety where it is excessive um, fears or worries that occur at least um, most days out of the week. There is social anxiety. Um, This is pretty common. There is a celebrity named Summer Walker that said, you know, I struggle with social anxiety. She struggled with social anxiety. She didn't even like um, performing concerts. And that is an area she had to grow in simply because she has social social anxiety and she became very worried or fearful of um, being judged in front of large crowds. Um, There's also separation anxiety where you feel this intense need to... um, be okay only around the people you love and as soon as you're separated or you're um away from close proximity from them you um you experience distress another type is specific phobia and um under specific phobia are different types of different types of anxiety where um i'll give an example so 
aerophobia is um, basically the fear of airplanes. So that's a very specific fear. Mm -hmm. um, however, there are also other types of specific phobia. So um, those individuals are afraid or worry about one specific issue or fear. And um, another example is a panic disorder. So individuals that have panic attacks. And another example is PTSD. So post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, we commonly associate that with veterans, but you can um, be diagnosed with PTSD from a relationship, from a car accident, Accident from um, a different arrays of traumatic experiences. So, with that being said, all of these different types of anxiety, um, different types of anxiety, if we're able to already have a coping kit set in place to utilize when we're feeling, you know, different mannerisms. Excuse me, not mannerisms. Different manifestations of, um, you know, anxiety we can already be prepared and it's more of a preventative thing versus mm -hmm. waiting until, you know, we hit rock bottom to say, okay, let me use my coloring book, you know. <laughs> well, you're being proactive, mm -hmm. not reactive, right? Yeah, I love that. Um, you, you was mentioning uh, the different types of, you know, anxiety and there, I was trying to figure out where was I going to go with that. You was mentioned, you described mm -hmm. each one of them. Um, you know, of course, we talk, I, I mentioned the nervous system. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I was going with it, but it came to my mind, but then it, it left me. But that's, if it comes back up, guess what? I'll let you know. That's I, understandable. I, I think something that's uh, important to y'all, something I thought about, um, you know, as we're coping with things um, and just thinking about some of the negative experiences that we face, um, we, we have to, I think, remember, I've, I've had to remember on my journey to... Uh, I guess this ties in, right? To put positive, more positive things into my, into my, um, into my daily journey. Mm -hmm. um, as I'm taking out some of those negative, uh, some of those negative behaviors, or some of those uh, negative, um, you know, j just times when my mind may go to something negative. Mm -hmm. Then I gotta put maybe an affirmation in there, or put something positive, in there, or put more gratitude in there to replace that. Because if I don't give if I just leave it empty, then that negative thing it'll come, it'll come right. back, it'll come right back around. It'll be at me again. Yep. Um, so just stressing the, um, the the importance of that. Um, you, did you think of what you sure did? did. Not, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. No, so, uh, well, a lot of times, like especially with anxiety, depression, or any other type of mental health struggles, we uh, some people be, might say, "I I shouldn't be feeling this way." Mm. All right, or they feel you know the shame or guilt or any you know without feeling the way that they feel, but it's okay mm -hmm. to feel those emotions. Like you're actually supposed to feel those emotions, mm -hmm. but you're supposed to have a way to recover from those emotions. Mm -hmm. Those emotions are supposed to be temporary; they're not supposed to stay for a long time. Because once they stay for a long time, anxiety, general anxiety, can turn into a panic attack, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because it's is your your nervous system is is then being overworked at that point. So I like to tell the people it's okay to feel these emotions for a short term so you can get the information that is trying to communicate to you, but then use the coping skills to regulate it back down to a more tolerable level. And um, another technique that I like to use with um, clients and individuals that may experience anxiety is to ask them, what are my concerns? What am I afraid of? What do I fear? Um, what do I worry so much about? Identify what it is or what you know those concerns are, mm -hmm. and then ask them, what is the or ask yourself, what is the likelihood of this this fear actually happening? You know, is it all in my head? What is the likelihood of that? concern actually happening and then a follow-up question is if this concern or this fear of mine did happen if I'm if I have aerophobia and I'm so afraid of airplanes and my worst fear is this airplane may crash you know um what think about the worst case outcome and then also think about the best outcome okay. if this if my fear does not happen the likelihood of an airplane crashing you know does not happen and the best outcome is I get to my destination safely and I'm going to Turks and Caicos. What, you know, let's let's weigh our likeliness and the um the reality of the likely likeliness is what I'm trying to say of that fear even happening. Um so we can we can create some practical ways to manage it. I like that. I like that. I got another one too, y'all. Fasting. Fasting mm. is uh really is a has been 
really important for me on, on my journey as a as a coping skill. Kind of similar to how we were talking about earlier about putting things into your just into your daily walk. Mm -hmm. That's been one that I put into just every week having a day, right? Where, where you fast. So what can what can be a coping mechanism if you if you introduce it into your everyday life or or whatnot into your life as a best practice then you like like we say you're ready you're um you're more resilient so uh, that's a big thing but but fasting if you, if you don't know about it it's, it's basically abstaining from from whatever you're abstaining from myself i would do food and water right abstaining from a certain period of time i guess it could be intermittent fasting mm -hmm. i don't know i some people use the terms inter interchangeably um but a lot of times what that does is uh just builds up um I would say builds up some resilience, almost. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say tolerance, but um, is it you, you, you go without, right? And um, I think along with that fasting, some meditation has to be in there too, some prayer, some meditation to kind of center you and focus you around either healing from what you're going through. Um, to ground uh, you. To, to, to ground you dur mm -hmm. during that process. Um, but I think I think you should try it, though. It's... It's, it's got some. Um, it's had some really great effects for, yeah. for for myself and for some of the people that that have used fasting as a technique for coping. I definitely agree with that. Um, in my opinion and in my experience, fasting has been very beneficial for me when I'm experiencing um, uh, an obstacle in life so that I can take away some of the distractions I experience on a daily basis. Sometimes I might <laughs> even fast from my phone. Like, I don't need my phone right now, you yeah. know, for a couple of hours. Let me abstain from it. Um, on, and what I heard from, I think another important factor to fasting or even to building your coping kit is to provide some affirmations in there, some positive self-talk. So, for example, while I'm fasting and while I'm um, refraining from eating or drinking, what am I telling myself in my mm -hmm. head? to give me some resilience, to give me some motivation, to give me some encouragement to get through that obstacle that day. And then, you know, the next day when you are eating and drinking or, you know, a week or two from now when you are eating and drinking, but a large challenge or a large obstacle or a sudden stressor comes into your life, you're able to resort back and practice um, what you have already built up in your coping kit. And you're, you're, you're able to repeat those self affirmations and phrases to yourself and repeat that positive talk in your head simply because you've already practiced it. Man, you better bring that thing I'm home to me, <laughs> Helen. That's I, 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 love, I love me yeah. some good affirmations. I ain't even gonna lie. Um, I have a lot of them in my toolkit, in mm -hmm. my coping kit. Um, it's just like you said, a reminder, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I recently got another tattoo. Uh, actually, I've been working on the leg sleeve and part of it, uh, I took a quote from... Um, Lion King, uh, when when Mufasa told Simba, "Remember who you are." Mm. That's like one of the main affirmations that I have, and that to me is telling myself, "Remember who you are." As far as where you've been, what you've been through, how you overcame it, and where you're trying to go, especially the overcame part. Yeah. So remember who you are, no matter what starts to happen now. So that's mm -hmm. I love me some good affirmations. That's funny because I was actually going to ask if you care to share one an example of one of the affirmations um, mm -hmm. you use. And I don't mind sharing one of the affirmations I use. When I was talking to my therapist um, last summer after a traumatic incident happened, she told me that, you know, Hannah, you're too harsh on yourself. You need to give yourself some grace, some compassion. Find um, or, you know, create an affirmation f phrase just for you that will help you like you said this phrase will help you in the, um in the situations you face and so my affirmation phase that i created is that god is omnipotent when i'm so used to trying to be in control of situations yeah. which you know i think eases my anxiety or eases my um concerns or worries about a situation i'm so used to trying to control that instead of just giving that over to god and recognizing that he's so omnipotent um, and he's able to take the situation, control it, find a resolution, find a solution for it without me worrying and stressing so much. So that's my personal affirmation state uh, phrase. Does it help you to get out of the way too so he, can, so he can do his thing? It does. It does because instead of placing myself, Hannah, in the situation, I'm able to take a step back and let his power, you know, um, resolve the, the situation. Look at that. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, my so my kind of similar. A lot of mine are scriptures, cause cause that's what I that's what I get into. Um, so what what I've been on lately? Um, what I've been on for a while? Just r- recognizing the and this is a coping skill I think too. Humility, believe it or not, uh, at least it is for me. But um, tells the scripture, uh, I must increase, that he decrease. Mm-hmm. Uh, I must I must decrease so that he increase so that he may increase. It's talking about uh, you know John the Baptist was talking about Christ, um, but basically put, putting my will down, putting what I want all the time out the way, allow myself to get out the way, so that uh, what needs to be done will be done. Right. All right. Uh, sometimes we have to get out of the way. In my case, of course, what needs to be done is is, uh, is you know is let God will be done. Um, but yeah. So that that that's one that's one for me too, you know. Mm-hmm. You brought up a really good point, Hannah. We try to control things so mm-hmm. much, especially when we think we got a little bit of knowledge. We think we know a little something. Oh boy! We think we, yeah. we know a little something. <laughs> then then you know we, we we think that we can solve every problem with with, with just what we have, and mm-hmm. uh, sometimes life is trying to teach us, you know, uh, that it's more to be learned. Right. Too. I say God's trying to teach us more to be learned too, and 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 when you get what. Uh, that that little bit that's that's more to be learned. Oh, we, and you're a little dangerous, but you even then you can't you can't you can't get up then you can't get up then like you like you know something because there's even more after that. I want to point out something. Your voice and tone just was elevated just now, but when you was talking about humility and talking about God, you had that low voice like you was that trying. To, the key. Yeah, you know you was trying to seduce someone or something. What's up with that, man? I'm trying to, did you feel seduced? No, 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 I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you, did you I did not. <laughs> did, y'all, did y'all feel seduced just now? Did I, did I seduce y'all? So one thing but I know. want to talk to you about is humility. Well, well, I guess, I guess, and, and I guess, um, I guess I was getting low, brother. I don't know. He was doing something he's, over there. He's getting low with it. I but I think it, it all comes back to having an effective coping kit that works for you. We're not here to tell you what to put in your personal um, coping kit. That's yeah. for you to decide what works for you. We're just here to offer some options um, and to motivate you to create a coping kit um, so that when you need to utilize it, it's already there. Yep. Beautiful. How y'all feeling? I feel good. I loved it. I like talking about coping Excuse me, coping good, strategies right? and skills, especially uh, letting people know that, you know, sometimes you might have something that works and then, you know, if circumstances happen, it stop working or you fall mm-hmm. off, but you can always get back on track and develop new ones or restart the ones that you've had before. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to really do some self-discovery and self-awareness for myself to realize that I had fallen off and then working to get back to um, implementing more self-care and coping strategies, so. Yeah, I feel great as well. I'm glad that you um, recognize that this has to be a daily pattern, a daily routine that we implement into our lives. Um, So I'm glad you recognize that. And it comes down to also um, utilizing self-care and recognizing when you need to, you know, extend more self-care or more grace onto yourself. And then after that, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You access or you utilize your coping kit. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, Yeah, Terrence... uh uh, both of y'all, I think that was beautiful. I know Terrence brought up, um, you know, it, it may not work forever, right? Mm-hmm. So you gotta, yeah. Always gotta make some changes. Like, yeah. Just like, I don't care how reliable you think it's gonna be, that $1,500 car, it ain't gonna. It might it not be, it, it, ain't, it, ain't gonna, it ain't gonna work. That's that. Yeah. <laughs> they okay. gonna get it done forever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now that we done uh, seduced y'all and everything, <laughs> we wanna uh, wrap up today's episode. Uh, <laughs> We emphasize the importance, truly it is importance, of taking proactive steps to manage stress and anxiety. Building a coping kit is an ongoing process, mm-hmm. ongoing process that requires patience and self-compassion. Give yourself some grace. Remember, it's okay to seek professional help if needed and always prioritize your mental health. Join us next time for another insightful discussion. This has been Speaking with Gravity. Speaking with Gravity. All right.